Let's bring in our panel now in Kabul, the capital of Afghanistan, of course, is Javed Faisal. He's the former deputy spokesman for the chief executive of Afghanistan. Javed was a candidate for Kandahar in the recent parliamentary elections. And David Sedney is in the United States in Abingdon, Maryland. He's a former U.S. Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Central Asia. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us on the Newsmakers. Uh, Javed, you were at the scene of the attack that killed your good friend, General Abdul Razik, recently. You have seen how the government is on the back foot in a very tragic and personal way. What is happening in the fight against the Taliban at the moment? Yes, uh, the recent incidents throughout Afghanistan were not uh, pleasant incidents. Uh, but the one thing that is even hurtful is that the terrorist groups, mostly Taliban and Haqqani, they have been attacking uh, the Afghan civilians. Uh, they have been attacking our populated areas, our cities. Uh, the army and the police, there is a fight going on, but the civilians who have nothing to do with the fight, that's something that is very concerning. Uh, and when we talk that there is hope for peace with Taliban, then there has to be positive intent shown by Taliban. They cannot kill us and they cannot talk to us uh, about peace. Both things cannot be carried out in the same time. They should either choose to, to do peace with us or to continue to kill us like they have been doing for years. Uh, what we are hoping for is that there has to be a peaceful solution to the problem in Afghanistan because Taliban have fought for 16 years and we have fought them for 16 years and uh, we did not come to a conclusion. So given that, there has to be a conclusion through dialogue through talks, and that is for the best interest of Afghanistan, the Afghan government, the Afghan people, and the Taliban who are from Afghanistan. And until there are peace talks, while the fighting goes on, how can the government hope to succeed when there are reports of the military not being paid for three months? There are military personnel complaining that they haven't been paid, winter is coming, they have to feed their families. What kind of motivation could a, anyone who works in security in Afghanistan have to do their job when they can't even take care of their own basic needs? So here we're talking about the government's responsibility towards keeping its people safe. When we talk about the Afghan forces, it's a voluntary force. Uh, their best reason to fight uh, against terrorism and Taliban is the Afghan people. It's their country. They are fighting for their country. They are on the right side. They are working for a good cause and they are fighting the devil. That's the best encouragement for them. But again, we can also talk about the responsibilities of the government. The Afghan government has to be a responsible government. They have been trying their best. We have witnessed uh, some reforms in the security institutions, but there is more that should be done. If we look at what people want right now, we are hearing about Malistan, we are hearing of Jaguri, the Ghazni, uh, and people came out to the government. They asked the, the government for rescue, they asked the government for protection, which means the people are with the government, which means the people are against Taliban and terrorist outfits. And if we talk about the Afghan elections, the turnout and the participation from the people was very good, uh, despite the threats coming from Taliban constantly that they will be attacking polling centers. And the Afghan security forces provided the security for the polling stations on the polls day, and people participated. And people decided to choose democracy over fear and terror. They defied Taliban, they stood for their rights, and they will continue to stand for their rights. But again, the Afghan government needs to do something more than this, and our international partners, the Americans, the NATO members, they have to make sure that Pakistan is encouraged or pressurized to do something against Taliban, because we all know that Pakistan is behind Taliban, that there are sanctuaries, safe havens, training facilities, and medical facilities for insurgents within Pakistan. Kuwait Shura, Peshawar Shura, 
those are there. So our international partners must encourage Pakistan to take actions against insurgent groups or to encourage insurgent groups to come to the peace talks, because the goal we are achieving in Afghanistan, which is eradication of terrorism, uh, it's a common goal. It's a shared goal. The international community should okay. be burdening. Let, let's put uh, that to be shouldering uh, the burden. Sure, that, Javid. That let's have. put that to David, because David, you know how the American government works. You've recently returned from Afghanistan. Shall we start with your own personal observations of what you encountered there? Um, the situation in Afghanistan has always been complex, and I would say the current push for peace is making it even more complex. Uh, I think it's fairly clear that the Taliban upsurge in uh, aggressive attacks, including, as uh, your, uh, your uh, colleague from uh, Kabul pointed out, on civilian targets, seems to be connected with the possibility of peace discussions. Uh, the Taliban, as many insurgent, uh, insurgent groups have done in other conflicts, if they see peace coming, they want to have peace from a position of strength. So they're seeking to expand their reach, to carry out attacks that uh, put the government on the back foot. The government has to defend the entire country. The Taliban can attack wherever they want. Uh, so I think that's uh, part of what you see. But at the same time, uh, there is a real disagreement and uh, uh, an infighting at the top levels of Afghan politics. Uh, there's a presidential election scheduled for next year, although there are some rumors those presidential elections might uh, be put off. Uh, there are top leaders in Afghanistan uh, debating over who will run on which ticket. Uh, there's a lot of confusion at the top levels and, uh, and not a lot of unity. So at the same time the Taliban are stepping up their, their attacks, uh, Afghanistan politically is not as unified as it should be. Javed is saying there that the Afghan government needs more external assistance, and he's mentioning specifically to put pressure on Pakistan. That's long been the accusation that there are elements in the Pakistani military that are supporting the Taliban. But what about the possibility of American troops being back on the front line? Could that ever happen? Because we now know that the American troops that are there are supposed to be well, they're supposed to be training and doing other exercises with the Afghan security forces, who are the ones who are doing all the fighting now. Would the Americans be interested in making any change? Would it be in their interest? Is it even incumbent upon Donald Trump to change the strategy in Afghanistan again? No, I don't see any chance that there will be uh, increased U.S. troop presence or increased role of U.S. troops in fighting. The role the U.S. is playing right now of advising and assisting uh, is what they've been doing, what the U.S. has been doing since 2014. It wasn't doing enough of it. So last year, President uh, Trump announced an expansion of the, those advisors. But you're not going to see U.S. troops uh, fighting the way they were from up, up until 2014. Uh, what you uh, might see is greater pressure on Pakistan, because, as you mentioned before, the uh, issue of Pakistan continues to be the big unsolved conundrum of this war. Uh, as long as the Taliban have the safe haven in Pakistan. And again, history shows us insurgent movements where they safe haven in their neighboring country do not lose. Uh, they may not win, but they do not lose. They continue fighting. Uh, so putting pressure on Pakistan uh, would be important. The U.S. government has put some pressure on Pakistan. But right now, there's a lot of doubt about the U.S. Uh, as President Trump uh, has uh, shown in other uh, circumstances, he can change his mind. Uh, people are afraid that he may be uh, willing to pull out of Afghanistan rather than put more troops in. What do you and think the chances are? David, what do you think the chances are of that? Because at this recent uh, conference that Russia hosted, the Taliban said that they'd be prepared to speak to the Afghan government if the Americans pull out. And until recently, the Taliban had always been saying, we're not even going to talk to our own government. We want to talk to the U.S. Now they're saying they'll talk to the Afghan government if American troops pull out. Is that a possibility? Well, it's, sort of, it's, it's already happened. Uh, the Taliban have had a number of meetings uh, with the U.S., uh, including uh, uh, Ambassador Halazad, the U.S. Special Envoy, met with him his last trip, this meeting with him again. So the, the U.S. And the, and the Taliban have met. The U.S. pulled out of Afghanistan, pulled all its combat troops out in 2014, and the Taliban only increased their attacks. So this statement that the, if uh, U.S. troops, uh, the, the few that are remaining were to pull out, uh, the Taliban would talk to the government is really a smokescreen. The Taliban use this, uh, this uh, allegation that they're waiting for foreign troops to leave as an excuse not to talk. Uh, we'll see if the Taliban are serious about peace if they sit down with the Afghan government 
That's been the case for the last 15 years and still re still remains that the Taliban have not decided on peace. There are, dis there are divisions inside the Taliban. Some members of the Taliban want a peace. Others want to continue fighting. And uh, that division at the top of the Taliban is really the main major reason you haven't seen peace uh, in Afghanistan, not anything dealing with U.S. troops. Uh, Javed, you mentioned a couple of different areas of uh, Afghanistan. So just in the past few days alone, 30 commandos killed, 15 others killed in Jagori. Uh, in Malistan, Khaz, Uruzgan and Jagori, they've been under siege by the Taliban for a few days. At least 150 police missing in the village of Khost. Uh, 37 police killed in a Taliban attack in Farah province. This is a group to whom Ashraf Ghani, the president, offered to negotiate and to try to strike a peace deal which would eventually see, he said, the president, the Taliban even becoming a political party. If the Taliban isn't going to accept those kinds of terms, do you really have any hope that they'll accept anything? Well, well, first thing we have to clarify that Taliban's fight in Afghanistan is not because that we have the Americans or international troops in Afghanistan. Their mission, uh, their military mission was ended in 2014 and the Afghans have been depending on Afghanistan on their own. Plus, if you look into Taliban, their fight in Afghanistan does not continue uh, after um, uh, 2001. Uh, they were fighting against Afghans from 1993, 94, 95, until 2001. And they are still fighting against the Afghan people. In 1995, we had no Americans in Afghanistan. There were no foreigners in Afghanistan uh, based on which Taliban had to fight. Their fight in Afghanistan is not for the purpose of country's protection or avoiding invasion or anything. It's purely the protection of Pakistan's interests in Afghanistan. Their foreign policy objectives are linked to the support of terrorist groups in Afghanistan. What we are hoping as Afghans and what we expect Taliban to, 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 to act upon as Afghans is that they should not serve the interests of others. They have to come to Afghanistan, make peace with their Afghan brothers and sisters, and, and not to destroy their own institutions, not to kill their own people. Look at their number of attacks, let's say, in the last one year. How many foreigners have they attacked or where they have attacked? They have been attacking, like I said earlier, our cities, our children, our women, our elderly people. Why should our school be blown up? Why should our roads be blown up? Why should mm -hmm. our clinics should be torched? Uh, so those are all the, the, the issues that the Afghan people are having with, with, with the Taliban, and we expect them to come to the peace talks. But if okay. we look into the past, there is not much hope. And if you look to, to the casualty numbers, it's not just the Afghan forces that you mentioned up. If you go into the numbers released by the Afghan Defense Ministry and Interior Ministry, you will see hundreds of Taliban are being killed on daily basis throughout the country. It's not just the Afghan fatalities. It's also the, the insurgents and the enemies that we have been killing on daily basis. But okay. again, the solution is not to continue to fight. The solution is to talk and to, to sit like, like humans and talk to each other and stop this nonsense and bloodshed in Afghanistan. Javed, David, thank you very much for joining us on the Newsmakers.